great day so today we are going to see reticulospinal tract the reason why I have written this reticulospinal tract in a vertical manner is because this reticular activating system is the one which gives rise for the reticulospinal tract and this reticulo activating system is a collection of nucleus which has both gray matter and white matter which is in the center of the um, pons and the medulla it is a long axial structure which runs from pons to medulla which is located medially okay now as usual uh, we are going to see all these seven crisp points on this reticulospinal tract before going into uh, this tract i would like to tell you this tract is very important because it is essential for both the posture as well as for the locomotion that is why this particular tract is uh, closely associated with the pyramidal tract in bringing about a controlled uh, locomotion of the human being this integrity and the interplay between the uh, reticulospinal tract and the pyramidal tract is highly developed not only in human beings but also in the animals who functions on a basis of central pattern generators if you want to know about what is central pattern generators i have given you the link above you can click onto that and you can know what is central pattern generators so when it comes to the reticulospinal tract you have two types of tracts the tract that originate from the pons are called as ponto uh, reticulospinal tract otherwise it is medial reticulospinal tract because it is uh, descending medially and ipsilaterally and uh, as it is present in the medial aspect of the spinal cord also that is anterior medial aspect of the spinal cord also this is called as medial reticulospinal tract otherwise what is other name ponto reticulospinal tract upper motor neurons for this particular tract is located in the pons upper motor neurons for the tract is in the pons what happens these tracts descends down and they uh, go through the medulla and then comes to the spinal cord they are located in the anterior medial aspect of the spinal cord fine next is the green one is the lateral or medullary reticulospinal tract and the red color one is the medial or the ponto reticulospinal tract so these two tracts are different it is not only different from the descending point of view or anatomical positional point of view from the functional point of view also these two differs uh, in two different extremes so that is how the reticulospinal tract is acting on locomotion of the human body so we have seen the nucleuses now where the nucleuses are located for the uh, two tracts one in the pons and one in the medulla next what we are going to see is where these two gets inputs from these two tracts gets input from very importantly ascending information that is coming from the spinothalamic tract and also from the medial lemniscus so these two are the ascending tracts the spinothalamic tract is the one which carries pain temperature touch pressure mild pressure the medial lemniscus is the one which carries the deeper sensation like your uh, kinesthesia proprioception and vibration sensation these two are giving sensory inputs to the uh, reticulospinal tract so we have seen the previous rubrospinal or the vestibulospinal receiving information from elsewhere part of the brain or from the vestibular apparatus but this one receives information from the ascending sensory information so this you have to remember when I am teaching you about tone I will tell you what is a significant correlation between the sensory information that goes to the reticular activating system and why uh, spasticity is a velocity dependent component there you will be understanding that it not only receives information from these two it also receives information from the hypothalamus it also receives information from the primary motor cortex precentral gyrus so what information hypothalamus is going to give hypothalamus will uh, is a satiety center is a center that tells you about the uh, uh, humanly needs like particularly hunger for example you are walking towards a hotel if you are too hungry who is going to tell your locomotor system that you have to walk fast because your body is deprived of food this hypothalamus is going to send information to the reticular spinal tract saying that you have to fasten your uh, gait because you are hungry the second thing the primary motor cortex 
when you are walking on a sand if your strategies are wrong you are walking on water if your strategies are wrong and you want some error correction mechanism to happen so the primary motor cortex plans a new type of uh, uh, walking pattern and sends this to the reticular spinal tract this is helpful for the error correction mechanism the cerebral uh, the uh, primary motor cortex and the cerebellum combine together to correct rectify bring about a much easier and energy conserving locomotory activity so this is the role of the inputs from the hypothalamus and the primary motor cortex and also the sensory information that is coming from the spinal cord up through the um, the uh, lateral spinothalamic tract and the uh, medial lemniscus uh, is going to give you information about where is the position of your limb where you are walking how is the sensory input you are receiving from the lower limbs and all these things whether your upper limb goes for a reciprocal uh, arm swing or all these informations are going to be integrated and this information is going to be fed into the reticulospinal tract so such is the importance of this particular tract so the input is from these areas next is whether this goes for a crossing over this does not cross over researcher says that there is a minimal crossing over that takes place for the medullary uh, uh, sorry uh, the pontine uh, reticulospinal tract but uh, as of now the amount of crossing over that takes place is very very minimal so the uh, both the tracks are going to control the ipsilateral side so where does this ends again as we always see tracks ends in the uh, anterior horn cells of the spinal cord but there is a small difference between that like the uh, lateral or the medullary spinothalamic tracts ends in the alpha motor neurons of the flexors and also uh, ends in the gamma motor neurons whereas the pontine ends in the alpha motor neuron of the extensors and gamma motor neurons so what we are going to what we are seeing here is the tract influences the alpha motor neuron and gamma motor neuron that's well and good so what we see here is this tract can influence both the flexors as well as the extensors of the human body uh, it exerts a maximal influence on the extensors a minimal influence on the flexors that also should be seen uh, proportionately how it influences these muscles got it so it ends in the alpha motor and gamma motor neurons flexors and extensors respectively next what is the influence the influence is i said the medullary part influences the flexors and the uh, pontine part influences the extensors why this is very important then comes the function when it comes to locomotion you need reciprocal inhibition at its best that means when i use my flexors my extensors should relax otherwise my flexors cannot be express itself so um, this is called reciprocal inhibition how it influences the reciprocal inhibition is it influences the internuncial neurons you you might have uh, remembered that the role of internuncial neurons in a uh, in a in a spinal cord if you see if the information comes from the posterior horn cells uh, sensory information comes to relay in the posterior horn cell this information is transmitted to the anterior horn cells by means of a cell called as internuncial neuron so these internuncial neurons are the one which is going to decide whether a facilitatory influence is going to go or a inhibitory influence is going to go so in case if uh, i'm going to do elbow flexion okay the uh, facilitatory inter uh, facilitatory internuncial neuron will be stimulated for the flexors of the upper limb and inhibitory will go to the uh, extensors then only your flexors can work properly so this uh, internuncial neurons are controlled by the reticulospinal tract okay so uh, what they are going to do is they are, apart from maintaining the posture because they are influencing the extensors of the human body they also bring about the locomotion where you need uh flexor and extensor activity repeatedly in a cyclic manner okay that is called reciprocal activity which is brought about by the influence of reticulospinal tract on the internuncial neurons fine that is a function of this tract and last is the dysfunction so what happens to the uh, problem in the reticulospinal tract when there is a injury to the brain stem it results in 
lack of posture second thing is lack of abnormal uh, um, lack of normal gait control and abnormal gait pattern will surface because the central pattern generators are believed to be located here uh, having failed to activate the central pattern generators walking is going to be a major issue in these particular track lesions thank you so much please share this video with all other friends of yours so that we can spread this knowledge thank you so much see you in the next video bye